Remember Zacchaeus? He was the Jewish tax collector working for the Romans. The one who, when he heard that Jesus was coming and could not see him, climbed up, climbed up a tree for a better view. But before I tell the rest of the story, I just want to paint a picture of the sort of life that Zacchaeus might have lived. The Romans were the occupiers of Israel, conquerors asserting their rule with force and aggression. They demanded taxes of the Jewish people, but gave, or rather sold, the right of collecting to individual Jews. These Jews could then add their own amount over and above what the Romans demanded, making themselves rich in the process. It is not difficult to see why they were hated so much by their own people. Imagine the scenario. A large Jewish family struggling to make ends meet. They barely have enough to feed everyone and are just thankful to get through each day. There is a loud knock at the door and a demand to open for the tax collectors. On opening the door, Zacchaeus is standing there demanding taxes for Rome. Behind him stand two formidable looking centurions. How much? She says to him. Surely that is more than our set amount. Zacchaeus looks down at his ledger and indeed the amount is less than he said. But he thinks that his family are good for a bit extra and knows they have no choice but to pay it. That's what you owe, he says confidently. Now pay up or else. That night when the husband comes in and sits at the table, he looks at the meagre rations that are laid out before him. He then looks at his wife and questioningly asks, Zacchaeus, right? She silently nods. That night, as Zacchaeus enters his own large home, his money bags full, he quickly takes off the robe he had been wearing, knowing it is streaked with the saliva of his fellow Jews who spit on him as he passes by. Later, as he eats a good dinner, he hears the distant laughter of family sitting down to eat together. He looks at the full bag of money on the side and then thoughtfully at his own empty house. For the Jews in ancient Israel, sitting down to eat with someone was the ultimate sign of acceptance that they belonged. To the Jews of his day, Zacchaeus had become like an outcast, the worst sort of sinner, working for the enemy, the unclean Gentiles, the Romans. So when Jesus comes to Jericho and in front of all the crowds calls Zacchaeus down from his viewpoint and says to him that he will be staying at his tonight, he is making a proclamation and demonstrating how the love of God has the power to change a man. The crowd is complaining, saying, he has gone to be with a man who is a sinner. As far as they concerned, are concerned, he is an enemy of Israel, without hope, only to be judged accordingly, to be treated according to the way he has treated others. But Jesus looks into the heart, knowing the power the words of love will make. The response of Zacchaeus is incredible. Jesus, the righteous healer of the sick, forgiver of sinners, has come and brought healing and forgiveness to his life, loving acceptance. Look, Lord, he says, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Salvation has come to this house, proclaims Jesus, for the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Today's message tends to be so different. We insist that people clean up their lives, restore and make good any harm they have done, and change their lives. Only then are they acceptable. In truth, we tell ourselves the same message, that God will really only accept us once we have made good, sorted out the sin in our lives. Only then will he come and eat with us, sit at our table in fellowship. The real truth is that we are having the wrong conversation. Our eyes are on ourselves, sometimes accusing ourselves and sometimes excusing ourselves. When in reality, our eyes should be on Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who has loved us in word and deed and invited us to fellowship with him, to sit with him in heavenly places. Ephesians 1, 6 says, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has, uh, he has made us accepted in the beloved. Only in Christ do we find acceptance. And then we, like Zacchaeus, are moved to repent, to change. Jesus never told Zacchaeus to do, to do what he did to make those changes in his life. It was the life-changing love of God poured out in the person of Jesus that brings acceptance and heartfelt change. Bless you and thanks for listening.